uh, namaste uh, welcome to papson distance learning education program with janta television and today uh, grade 9 science uh, we have new chapter that is force and motion previously we have discussed the first lesson that is measurement and uh, in measurement uh, we have discussed the uh, different things related to the measurement so today we are going to start the new lesson that is force and motion so let's uh, start this uh, force and uh, motion okay so before starting this uh, what things we are going to learn the objective of uh, the force lesson let's see uh, we will discuss here the inertia motion and uh, force of moving object or body uh, that may be the rest or motion that we will uh, discuss here and similarly we will discuss the newton's uh, law of motion also their statement and uh, uh, some example related to that also we will discuss here similarly the type of force that is balance force and the unbalanced force that also we will discuss on this lesson and similarly we will uh, deal with the some calculations related to the acceleration some numerical problem related to the acceleration that we will discuss here and similarly equations of motion derivations and their uh, numerical problem related to this uh, we are going to discuss on this lesson force and motion on the grade 9 that we are going to discuss so uh, let's start uh, with the help of force let's get some concept about the force okay so I have a uh, duster here right and uh, this duster now initially it is in the rest until I apply the some external agent on it for example if I apply some force here then it comes in the motion right similarly if the object is in the motion and if I apply the force then it comes in the rest isn't it so whenever the object is in the state of rest or motion then we apply the some other external agent from outside which make the change of the state of the object which is known as the force so we can simply define the force as a push or pull and also we can define the force as a external agent which change or tends to change the state of matter from rest to motion or motion to rest and force it also change the shape of the object also as well as it change the directions of the moving object and uh, the state of object also it changes with the help of this force so simply we can define push or pull it is called the force so uh, you can see in the slide also uh, there is a, some example is there uh, wh where the people they are applying the force right and whenever the force is get applied on it then the state of object from the rest to motion or from motion to rest that get changed one so it is an external agent which cause change the state which cause change the shape which cause change the directions of the moving object that is the force so force we can uh, measure the force in the newton that is the si unit of force and similarly we can measure this on the dyne in the cgs system of unit and the symbol for unit of force is newton that is the si system of unit and uh, this force it's a vector quantity right because it need the magnitude also for expressing the force as well as it need the direction also for expressing expressing the force that's why it is the uh, uh, vector quantity the force it is the vector quantity now whenever we apply the force in any object some certain changes takes place on that object that is the effect of force for example it caused the change the rest and the motion of the object if the object is in the rest then it change into the motion and if the object is in motion then it change into the rest but it is not always uh, correct one sometimes it may not change but in maximum case it changes from rest to motion or from motion to rest that is the effect of force similarly whenever suppose this uh, moving one object we have it is moving slowly 
if we apply the force on it, then it increases the speed of the moving object. That means whenever we apply the force, then it may cause the increment in the speed of a moving object. So next effect is it caused the increasing increment in the speed of the moving object. Sometimes it may cause the decreasing also, sometimes it may cause the increase. So speed get changed when we apply the force. Similarly, you might have seen uh, whenever the baller uh, throw the ball towards the batsman, then the batsman hit the ball in the opposite direction. That means by applying the force, we can change the directions of a moving object also. Direction can be changed of the moving object by applying the force. And similarly, if we have the rubber ball, if we apply the force, then the shape get changed one. It just gets squeezed one, the size get changed one, isn't it? So shape of the object also get changed when we apply the force on the object. That is the some effect of force when we apply the force to the object. Now let's talk about the balanced and the unbalanced force. So what is this balanced and unbalanced force? So let's talk about that. Balanced, balanced and unbalanced force. Okay, uh, you might have played the tug of war. Uh, in that tug of war, the two groups will be there and they will pull in the opposite direction. One uh, thread or the rope will be there, some mark may be there, and the in the two direction, in two, two opposite direction, the people they used to pull or they used to apply the force, right? In that tug of war, if the both group they apply the equal amount of force, then the rope does not get moved, right? What I mean is when the equal amount of force are applied in the opposite direction, then the movement is not possible then. That is known as the balanced force, right? And out of that two group, if one group apply the more force, then that group will pull the another remaining group in their own direction, which is called the unbalanced force. So when we apply the force on the any object simultaneously, if it do not bring any kind of change on the state, then that kind of force is called the balanced force. If it does not cause the change in the state, then that is called the balanced force. I have already gave the example. When the two groups are pulling in the opposite direction in the tug of war, if there is no movement is there, then that is the balanced force, right? And if there, the applied force cause the change in the state or bring the state change then in that condition, that is called the unbalanced force. And in unbalanced force, the state of object get changed one. That is called the unbalanced force. So you can see in the screen also, there is a two figures I have kept, right? In the one first figure, there is uh, the both groups, they are applying the equal amount of force. That is of 300 Newton, you can see in the screen also, right? That's why the movement of the thread or the rope is not possible in that case, which is the balanced force. That both team, they are applying the equal amount of force, so the state do not get changed when, that's why it is called the balanced force. And in next figure, you can see one team, it uh, apply the 400 Newton force, another team, only 300 Newton force is there. That means definitely the team which apply the 400 Newton force, that pull the another team on their own direction, which is the unbalanced force. So that is the concept of balanced force and the unbalanced force. So what is the difference is there between this balanced force and the unbalanced force is there? Let's see. So we have said in the balanced force, the state get changed. For example, sorry, state do not get changed in the balanced force. What I mean is if the object is in the rest, then it will stay on the rest in the case of the balanced force. But in the case of unbalanced force, the state get changed from rest to motion. 
that is the first difference between this balance force and the unbalanced force so in the case of balance force the equal amount of forces get applied mean the resultant force is zero or net force applied on it is zero for example in the previous pictures 300 newton in the left hand side and the 300 newton in the right hand side so the net force or the uh, force net force applied on that team or on that game is zero newton so in the balance force the net force applied is zero newton but in the case of unbalanced force net force applied may be the positive one that is the difference next difference man right similarly the balance force it doesn't cause the acceleration on the object but in the case of unbalanced force it caused the acceleration it produced the acceleration right similarly in the case of balance force the shape may be changed one but in the case of unbalanced force the shape also get changed as well as the directions of the object also get changed one so that is the difference between the balance force and the unbalanced force so now let's move on to the next uh, heading that is called the rest and the motion so you can see one uh, video over there now it seems that everything is the is in the rest right but whenever the windows get open there then we can see that the every object seen on the outside that is moving on the backward direction right actually that is the vehicle one and uh, when the vehicle moves then the relative position get changed one according to their surrounding one right so previously we haven't seen any kind of change in the position between the object right that is we seems that we see the, the pictures it seems that is everything is in the rest previously but whenever the open the windows get open over there then it seems that the object is moving right what i mean is so we are going to define the rest and the motion okay so we are going to define rest and motion so what is this rest and the motion so let's see okay suppose uh, this duster is here right now right and if i hold this duster then it is not changing its position it stay on its own place forever until the f any force is applied on it right that means this duster it is not changing its position with respect to this board with respect to my face right it is not changing its position that's why it is in the rest okay so what i have said is if the object is not changing its position with respect to some reference point previously i have said this duster is not changing the distance with respect to this board so this board is the reference point right so if it is not changing its position with respect to some reference point then it is said to be a rest okay if it is not changing the position okay if i just move like this then it is changing its position with respect to this board with respect to my face so that is the case of the motion so the object is said to be in the motion if it is changing its position or if it is changing its uh, distance from the some reference point and that object is said to be in the motion so what is the reference point here is reference point is the place or point with which we state the object with we state the uh, state of the object with respect to the other what i mean is it is the point or the place right from which the state of another object is compared one that is called the uh, reference point so uh, previously i have checked the uh, reference point for this duster the whiteboard right we are so this whiteboard is the reference point if i check this in uh, uh, with the respect to my face then the my face is the reference point so reference point with the help of that reference point we state the uh, rest or the motion of a 
object. Without that, that is not possible. For example, uh, if I ask what is my position, then you may answer that is a rest, right? But I may be in the motion also. So for that rest and the motion, the reference point is compulsory. Without the reference point, we will be unable to explain the state of object. Either that is in rest or either that is in the motion. We will be unable to explain that rest and motion without the reference point. That's why the reference point must be there for explaining the rest and the motion. So I have said I'm rest in with re respect to this whiteboard, but I'm in motion if we take the reference point, the sun. With respect to sun, I'm in motion, but with respect to this whiteboard, now I'm in the rest. So the same object that may be in the rest, the same object that may be in the motion, that's why this rest and the motion, they are the relative term. So let me explain once again this one. So if I talk about my position, I'm in rest with respect to this whiteboard, right? Because we are not, uh, the, my body is not changing the position with respect to this whiteboard. That's why I'm in the rest with respect to this whiteboard. But if I consider the reference point, the sun, let's say Jupiter, let's say moon, in that condition, my body is in the motion with respect to sun, with respect to moon, with respect to Jupiter. That means the same body, same my body is in rest. If I take the reference with the help of this whiteboard and my body is in motion if I take the sun. That's why the same object may be in the rest or may be in the motion depending upon the reference point. That's why the rest and the motion, they are called the relative term. The rest and motion, they are called the relative term. So one more example for this relative term to explain. So you can see in the screen, uh, there is a two pictures are there. One is the passenger that is inside the vehicle, right? Another that vehicle from outside. So the two pictures are there. Let me explain this. So whenever the passengers are there inside the moving vehicle, then the, the passengers with respect to another passenger, they are in the rest because they are not changing their position with respect to others. What I mean is, for example, you can see three people peoples are there in the front uh, seat, right? So whenever the vehicle is in the motion, the three people, they are not changing their position with respect to each other. That's why it is in the rest. With respect to the other passenger, they are in the rest, though the vehicle is moving one because the reference point is the people or the passenger inside the vehicle is there. That's why they are in the rest, right? But if we consider the trees outside the vehicle, right? Electric pole outside the vehicle, road outside the vehicle, and the grass present outside the vehicle, then the passengers, they are in the motion with respect to trees, with respect to electric pole, with respect to road. That's why they are in the motion. So the same passenger, if we consider the reference point, other passenger, they are in the rest. And the same passenger, whenever we consider that the trees and the electric pole outside the vehicle, they are in the motion. So the same passenger is in the rest and the same passenger is in the motion. That's why the rest and the motion, they are the relatives term. So I think it is clear one to you. Now, next one, let's see about this vector quantity and the scalar quantity. So before uh, defining this vector quantity and the scalar quantity, so let's take some example, okay? So uh, let's say the one object is there, which is five meter away from the electric pole. That is the, uh, okay, one statement. Right. Let me uh, draw the figure for this one. So I have said five meter distance from this electric pole. If I try to draw the figure for this, so suppose this one is the electric pole. OK, this one is the electric pole. Let's say this one is the electric pole. Now, I have said that the object is five meter distance from the electric pole. Now, how to draw that figure? 
So five meter distance that may be on this direction also five meter distance, right? Similarly, this also may be five meter distance, right? Similarly, in this direction also I can draw five meter, and in the backward also I can draw the five meter. That means if I only say the five meter away from the electric pole, then I cannot draw the perfect figure for this one. That means there must be the one other information with this so that I can clearly draw the figure. That is the direction one. If I say towards the east, then I can draw the figure in the perfect way. That means this information is not complete to explain the statement, right? Similarly, if I say the 5 kg mass, then I can easily draw the 5 kg mass. That means, so let's say this is the 5 kg, right? So it is the complete information. So this 5 kg is the complete information, but uh, the previous one, 5 meter distance away from the electric pole is the incomplete information. Similarly, if I say the temperature of hot water is 70 degree, then that information is complete one. Right? Similarly, if the acceleration of moving object is 5 meter per second square, then that may be on the any direction. So this 5 meter per second square also not complete information one. That means there is a different physical quantities are there which require the direction also as well as the magnitude also. What I mean is if the physical quantity that require the magnitude as well as the directions for expressing it completely, then it is called the vector quantity. That means the quantity which require the magnitude and the direction for explaining it completely, it is called the vector quantity. For example, displacement, right? Similarly, acceleration, similarly force, they are the example of a vector quantity. And similarly, some of the physical quantity, only the magnitude is enough for explaining it. For example, just previously I have said 70 kg weight, that is enough for explaining the mass, right? That means those quantity which only the magnitude is enough for explaining, they are called the scalar quantity. For example, scalar quantity example is like uh, distance, right? Displacement is the vector quantity and distance is the scalar quantity, right? Similarly, mass, that is also the scalar quantity. That's why the scalar and the vector quantity, if the magnitude and the direction both require, that is the vector quantity, and if the magnitude only require for complete explanations of it, then it is called the scalar quantity, right? I have given the example also, the vector one example is displacement, velocity, force, acceleration, weight, and the momentum, they are the, some example of the vector quantity, right? And one more information about this vector quantity is the, for the simplification of vector quantity, for addition and the subtractions of vector quantity, some special laws are required. One. The simple algebra cannot be used for uh, sum up, for adding, and the, for differentiating the vector quantity. So there is a certain law for calculations of a vector quantity, right? And the sum of this vector quantity, that may be positive also, and that may be negative also. So it contains the direction, that's why it may be the positive, and it may be the negative one, the vector quantity, okay? Okay, so similarly, the scalar quantity example also I have said, like speed, that is the example of scalar quantity. Similarly, area, that is also the scalar quantity, and power, scalar quantity, volume, scalar quantity, mass, scalar quantity, time, and the distance, they are the some example of a scalar quantity. And uh, scalar quantity can be add and the subtract by using the simple arithmetic laws. With the help of that simple arithmetic laws, it can be calculated one, this uh, scalar quantity can be calculated one. So next one, let's see about distance and the displacement. What is distance and what is the displacement? So let's talk about this distance and displacement. Okay, so for this, so let me draw the one figure. This is the 
place A, let's say, and this one is the place B, right? Then if I move from place A to B, there may be the different ways are there in that uh, to move from point A to B. That is, so I can move like this also from A to B, right? I can move like this also from A to B, and I can move like this also from A to B, and I can move like this also from A to B, right? If I travel this A to B with the help of path C, let's say, then whenever I travel from this A to B through this C, then this total length of the path cover, what I mean is, so when I travel from this A to B through this C, then this total length of the path is known as the distance. Okay. So distance is total length of the path covered is called the distance. So this is also distance. This one is also distance. And this also is distance, right? So distance is the total length covered. Now, if I talk about the shortest distance between this A and B, right? The shortest distance between this A and B that we will define as the displacement. So displacement is the shortest distance from for initial point. So suppose this is, this I have started from here, this is the initial point, and this one is the destination point or the final point. So the shortest distance between the two uh, point, initial position to the final position is known as the displacement. So displacement is the shortest distance, and the uh, distance is the total length of a path covered is called the distance. Okay, another one example. So you can see in the screen also, right? There is uh, one cyclist is there, okay? And uh, one house is there and the tree is there. So that figure you can see in the screen also, right? Three points are there, point A, and the point B and point C. So these three points are there. Okay, the cyclist started the traveling from point A, let's say, right? He traveled from this A to B, whose distance is about four meters is there, right? Again, he traveled from that point B to C, then it is three meters is there, let's say. Now, total distance, so total distance travel is 4 meter from A to B, and from B to C, 3 meter. That means 4 meter plus 3 meter is the total distance traveled by this cyclist, right? So this one is 7 meter. So the distance traveled by him is 7 meter. Now, what is the displacement? Initial point is A, and the final point is C is there. So the displacement between these two points is this one, the shortest distance. Why we will not take the longest distance is for the displacement. Longest distance is not constant one. For example, if I say this one is the longest distance, then the another, again, maybe the next path which is longer than this one. That's why longest distance is not fixed, so we'll take the shortest distance for the displacement. So in this case, the displacement is five meter. So you can use this Pythagoras theorem for calculating the five meter. So displacement is the shortest distance between the initial position and the final position. That is the displacement. So one more example of this displacement is Suppose A is there, B, C, D is there. So from A to B, B to C, C to D, and D to A is there, right? Suppose this is three meter, and this one is five meter, five meter, and three meter is there, right? Now the a person is there, he travel from A to B, B to C, C to D, and D to A. So the total distance travel is 
3 meter plus 5 meter plus 3 meter plus 5 meter. This is the total distance. It is uh, 16 meter, but the displacement is zero. Why? Because initial point also same, and the destination point or final point also same. That's why the displacement is zero. So this is the concept uh, for uh, vector, sorry, distance and the displacement. So in today's class, we have discussed something about this force, right? And uh, we have discussed the scalar quantity and vector quantity also. In the upcoming class, we will discuss more about this force and motion. motion. So thank you very much for joining the class. So uh, be safe. Thank you very much, everyone. Caption Dur.